Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back on GT Sport and we're back with an open lobby race now. This was a race that we actually streamed live. This is why we're using the different camera angles. We're going to use the cockpit view for what we normally use as the bumper view. And we're going to use the replay cameras and mix them around obviously to show different angles. Because this was a very, very close race and a thoroughly enjoyable battle all the way to the finish i think you're going to really enjoy this race as you can see starting out we're using the new cars that got added on the last patch we did an open lobby where there was no option to drive anything other than the gt500 cars you can see so i don't know if there was an issue with people some people got auto drive bug at the start which is fairly common in these public lobbies but and um, there was a bit of a gap between the top four and i think all the way down to 16th it developed straight away you can see in the distance there quite a big gap before the next car but the top four drivers fairly competitive at this point you can see very close we've got Calster in the lead there myself in p2 and op34 in p3 and we've got someone else in p4 can't exactly remember who it is but a very close battle straight away from the opening lap you can see two different cars we've got the nsx and the the two cars behind myself and myself and Calster in the gtr the new nissan group 2 car now these cars are not very balanced for the new, the, the obviously the cars that were originally in Group 2. That's why we did a lobby where we just tried to keep it. So anyone who came in with the other cars, we told them they had to change them um, to try and keep the racing equal and to test these cars out. Unfortunately, we couldn't race them how they're meant to be. We had to race them with the BOP on, which increases the power and actually makes them drive a little bit, um, not, as, not as they're intended to drive really, which is a shame. Um, I would have liked to try these cars out with totally stock settings, but you're relying on other people not tuning their cars then which we didn't really want to do so we put the BOP on just to make sure everything was fair as we can see going through the final corner trying to take a nice tight line there after I had a bit of an error on the chicane um, so trying to take a tight line to pick up the slipstream of Calster and make sure that I'm right behind there as you see we're going to jump on board with the onboard action as we're working our way into turn one just about picking the slipstream up at this point you can see around six tenths behind four tenths behind getting fairly close under braking as we go into the tricky corner you can see cal Seb really pushing hard at this stage both pushing fairly aggressively and actually building a bit of a gap up to p3 at this point in the race and actually starting to break the slipstream site you can see p4 also dropping back from the slipstream of op34 as we're now working our way to obviously to the start of lap two working our way through the corners and just trying to keep consistency at this point trying to at this point because we were doing like open lobbies we haven't really practiced these i think what you tend to do is obviously work your way up to your like proper speed so first few laps are just about feeling the grip and then working our way up feeling the grip and getting faster as we drive obviously more and more laps as we can see going through the tight right hand corner different type of lines that we took through there calcer seemed to go a little bit deeper into the corner i prefer on that corner staying fairly narrow towards the apex of the corner and then trying to get on the power as early as possible both very similar results as we come out the corner though no real gain from either method so it shows you there are multiple ways to take these corners and um, there isn't necessarily a correct way it's more about personal preference how you want to drive the course as we go through the final one of the final fast corners on the on the lap picking up a little bit of oversee on the exit there as we run into the gravel just ever so slightly and lose a little bit of time to um calcer there dropping back to very close to losing the slipstream at this point you can see in the top right hand corner a bit of a gap developing so trying to drive fairly aggressively through the chicane to try and pick that slipstream back up getting very close to the curb calcer nearly losing control of his car there looking very wild on the rear of that um yellow nissan gtr um group 2 car the old gt500 car looking very very um aggressive and loose as he came out of the corner there it looked like he was going to lose it but managed to hold on to it as we look back at myself driving on board with calster it's getting very close on the braking you can see the the effect of the um slipstream obviously when you're in the slipstream on gran turismo sport now a lot of people don't aren't aware of this we, we obviously know most people know that obviously follow my channel though but when you're behind other cars gt sport simulates um the loss of downforce when in a slipstream so it's you can stay you get the advantage down the straights but then through the corners the car starts feeling a little bit looser at the rear especially in group two and group one cars they're the cars where you really feel this difference because it's high speed they're quite high downforce they've got a lot of grip so when you do lose that grip you really do feel it and that's why you just have to shorten your braking distances a bit be a little bit more cautious on the power and then just pick up that slipstream and get closer as closer as possible um, but really fun cars these i do enjoy them it's just a shame that the bop isn't really matched to the original group two cars i kind of 
I kind of wish they wouldn't have put them in the class now. I kind of wish these would have been in their own separate car class. Um, I don't see why they keep having to add them into all these new cars into exi you know, the ca existing classes. It would be nice if they created uh, new classes. It's the same story for the Group C cars that got added into Group 1. Um, we could have had four really good Group C cars in their own class. However, they decided to put them into Group 1. Same story with these. These cars really don't fit the Super GT cars because they're, they're a bit underpowered. So what they've had to do with the BOP is try and add power to them. And what this does in general is makes them a little bit more um, hard, a little bit difficult to drive. But still, even with that, they're not competitive against the the, the original Group Two cars. So I think maybe they want to have a little look, and then I I would like them to separate the classes, but they probably won't do that. They'll probably just try and BOP them until they get them fairly cl close. But I feel it's a shame because I think these cars would be a nice like they could have just called the class like GT500 or you know. GT, you know, anything like that GT500 would have done. I don't know if they could have done that for the sake of licensing, but I'm sure they could have, you know, GR500 or something like that. Um, we could have added some of the other older cars that can go in that class into that um, group in the future. It would have been a really nice class of car to be racing, um, but it's not to be. They're in the group two, and that's where they'll stay because they, they haven't listened with the group one cars either. With the um, obviously the group C cars that got added in on the previous update, so. We'll probably be stuck with these in Group 2, as you can see. Battling away with Cal Cecil. Just very close to losing the slipstream again. Had a little error on a few of the corners. Started losing some ground to Cal Cecil. Again, that different line that Cal Cecil takes very deep into the corner. I like to take a, a, more, a little bit smoother line through there and just keep it nice and calm, as you see, riding on board with myself now. This was a very tricky corner in this Nissan. It was um, You had to take a really select line with the more modern cars that have obviously been on the game for a while you can just go straight flat out through there with no issues the older ones had to be a little bit more cautious as Kausa looks so close um, to losing control and I also going through that corner nearly lost control of the car you can see pretty much out of the slipstream at this point so we needed to get back into that slipstream and then try and put Kausa under some pressure in this race as he was starting to pull away a bit which was not what we wanted but started to settle into the rhythm a bit as Kausa has a massive moment there nearly losing control of his car and um, the rear dancing around and just manages to save it and keep the power down just about not losing too much time maybe lost a tenth or two there which gave us a chance to pick that slipstream back up and then start trying to put him under some pressure in this race as we go on to lap five out of eight now a bit of a gap developing to p3 you can see p3 dropping back a bit now um, he seems to just be struggling a little bit on pace, maybe a tenth or two a lap, nothing massive. It's a very close battle between the top three, you can see, and then P4 has dropped back quite a bit now. So it's pretty much a top, there's three cars pretty much involved in this battle for the lead, but a really enjoyable race, as you can see, trying to keep control of the car. Kausa looking a little bit loose through there, myself pushing a little bit wide, just about getting away with that without running onto the gravel. As we go into the real technical corners, these corners, I do love these in the high downforce court cars. You really have to chuck it in, throw it in there, and then it bites up and then get on the power nice and early as we get very close. Using the full width of the track there to get as much speed out of these Group 2 cars as possible. Going into the heavy braking zone, you can see Kelser again goes for that different line to me. You can see it really is like um, two different approaches to the corner. Kelser nearly losing it on the exit. That could be something to do with obviously the approach where he goes very aggressive into the corner. And then he's putting a bit more steering angle when he's coming out of the corner. Whereas I tend to go tighter in, a little bit slower speed and then get on the power a little bit earlier because I've got an angle to do that. But both methods equally as fast. But again, Kyle's a massive moment there, getting really loose on this lap and having a lot of moments. This is going to give us a slipstream now to have a little look to make a move. You can see picking up that slipstream, we're going to go and how are we going to be able to go to the inside? He defends the inside. We're going to try and stay to the right side. I could see that it wasn't really worth going for that move. So backed out of that, just tucked back in and wait for another opportunity obviously you have to pick your opportunities because if you if you do go for a move on that chicane and it doesn't work you can lose a lot of time so decided to back out of that you can see p3 actually getting very close now to this battle where obviously the battling that's going on between my, me myself and calcio as calcio goes really defensive trying to break that slipstream i decided to just stay over to the left hand side because he did it so drastic like dramatically i thought if i just stay on my line i'll probably gain anyways you can see gaining a lot of time into the breaking zone and right behind calcio now and looking for a way past trying to keep it smooth calcio was driving his car looked very erratic so i thought if I just keep this car on the track, maybe I'll find a way to get past him. Maybe an opportunity will come if he loses the rear again. Obviously, Kalsa drives on the pad, so um, it can be a little bit trickier sometimes to catch moments like that. And um, 
You can see he's doing a great job though on that pad in the Nissan in front of me. As I'm now trying to put some pressure on again, you can see trying different lines. Every time pretty much a different line we take from some of these corners. But again, look at the rear of that Nissan getting really loose as we're coming out of that corner and just about saving it again as we're coming to the midway point on lap six. As again, you can see that different line that he goes into the corner deeper and then squares it off. Whereas I say a lot more narrow to the corner and then just it's a little bit. I think my line's a little bit smoother, but I don't think there's much difference in terms of lap time. As you can see now, going into the long left-hand corner, this um, fast left-hand corner, then you've got the long right-hand corner. Very tricky section to track this. As again, Calster running very far wide. Really risky to do that because you can lose the rear end of the car and lose control really easily now as I'm just trying to, trying to pick up that slipstream and get every little inch closer to try and make a move in this race. We're running out of laps now. You can see we're coming to the end of lap six. We've got the slipstream there. We've got two laps to do this. So trying to pick a point um, when to make a move and trying to just get as close as I can to the slipstream. Um, Kalsa was driving really well, so it was really hard to gain that much time because you do gain a bit on the slipstream, but then through the corners, you tend to lose a bit on the fast corners with cars like this. As again, is going to go really aggressively to the right-hand side of the track. I'm just going to go over there nice and slow, not trying to be too aggressive, just to try not to scrub too much speed off as we go into turn one. Again, Kaus is going to go a little bit wider through there. I'm trying to keep it as smooth as I can. I don't want to get dust on the tyres as... As you can see there, as Kals got a little bit of dust on the tyres, it does affect the grip of these cars on GT Sport. If you pick up dirt or anything like that, it can make the car a little bit unstable for a few corners. So you just have to be a bit careful of that as we go through these corners. Again, trying to keep it smooth, getting closer and closer to that Nissan in front of me and trying to look for an opportunity. I felt like there was going to be an opportunity coming. He was starting to look very erratic in this race. So I was thinking if I can just stay on the back and put him under pressure, there might be an opportunity that will come my way. As you can see now, just how close we're getting to the back of Kalsa's car as we look back on myself as we're getting very close in the braking. Again, that different line. I actually went a little bit deeper than I normally do in that line. Took a little bit of a similar line to Kalsa through there as obviously the loss of downforce lost me some braking ability and went in that little bit deeper. And again, look at the loss of downforce. I had no front end at all when I was really close to Kalsa through there. Ran a little bit wide and actually picked up a penalty at that phase in the race. So I had to consider when I was going to get rid of it. I know that obviously going into the final chicane here, this is lap seven. I knew I had to get rid of it on lap seven so that I could then battle for the win over the line. So you're going to see I just lift off a little bit as we come through this corner. You're going to see my car ghost around now. You see a little lift there, get rid of the penalty coast into the braking and try not to lose as much time as possible you can see and just about staying in the slipstream so lost um, I think it was like half a second penalty and just about stayed in the slipstream so very close to Calster now and again getting really close to him through the corner as we're picking up that slipstream he's going to go again to the right hand side of the track and try and break that slipstream we're going to stay following him as closely as possible he's staying right to that wall you can see how close we both were there as he's trying his hardest to make sure that I cannot find a way through on turn one as he goes a little bit wide through there, I try and go on a wide line and then tuck in on the inside. We're going to see if we can make it work. Getting really close to Kalsa now on this final lap. Can we find a way past? Are we going to be able to make a move somewhere? And again, look how close this is. This is brilliant racing and this is why we love GT Sport. Um, when you're finding people that you can race with this close, it is really good fun. And again, going through to the left-hander, trying to look for a way past, trying to put pressure on, trying to show the front end of our car, trying to put Kalsa under some pressure as he goes a little bit fast into that corner. We try and take a slower line in and then a faster line out. But again, so the loss of downfalls is just so much that you kind of can't get on the power as early as you would like. Um, so quite realistic in that in that regard as we go through to this right-hand corner again. Going a little bit deep into the corner, trying to get back on the power just to keep the pressure on Kalsa all the way to the finishing line. We want to take advantage of any mistake that he makes to you know, try and make a move. As again, he makes a little mistake there on that tricky fast um, chicane as we go through to the left-hand corner now. Can he hold on to that lead now all the way to the finishing line? We're going to try and really get on the power nice and early through this corner. Really close to Kelsa there. Getting on the slip power nice and early. Um, got really good traction out of the corner. You can see the traction we got. We're picking up that slip room. Can we go for a move? We're going to go and have a little look down the right-hand side. And then we're going to fake that and then try and tuck up the inside. He tries to then defend that, which is what I wanted. That gives me a better line for this, this game, which then he goes a little bit too deep on. I go around the outside. We're now going to try and hang it around the outside, this final corner at the Nürburgring. This is a really tricky move to make, but we managed to break really deep into the corner. Then we've got the advantage of being on the power that little bit earlier. And we managed to take the lead on the final corner and take the win in that race. A really dramatic end to that race and a thoroughly enjoyable race. I really did enjoy that race. 
So if you want to check that race out, make sure you check out the description or I'll put a link for this stream that that race was done live on. Um, some a really good battle that was. Thoroughly enjoyed. But hope you enjoyed that. And we'll be back with more races very soon. Hopefully back with more streaming also throughout the week and some more FIA racing. Thanks again for watching, everyone.